How often do you read all of the ingredients on your labels for your supplements or even foods for that matter? Do you start going through the list, checking off boxes in your head, and then you start getting down towards the end and you see words like carboxyl, methyl cellulose, sodium, or polysorbate 80, and you just mentally check out? You end up going, hmm, I think I can trust this brand. They've been around for quite some time. Yeah, it does get a bit intimidating when you start seeing chemical compounds that you're not familiar with. So I made this video to help you decipher these common inactive ingredients, what you should avoid, be cautious of, or what you should be, you know, totally fine with. So let's get started. Let's talk about polysorbate 80 first. Polysorbate 80 is used as an emulsifier to improve the consistency of gel capsules and to make pills disperse within your stomach. Studies have found correlations between the consumption of polysorbate 80 and an increased risk for blood clots, stroke, heart attack, heart failure, and of tumor growth or recurrence in patients with certain types of cancer. And a recent study has found a strong connection linked to bowel problems. Relatively low concentrations of polysorbate 80 induced low-grade inflammation, obesity, and prompted robust colitis in mice. They suggested that the consistent use of emulsifiers might be contributing to an increased incidence of metabolic syndrome and other chronic inflammatory diseases. Titanium dioxide is used as a whitening agent in many supplements and topical products. It's been shown to cause lung inflammation and damage. There's also strong evidence that the nanoparticles can damage DNA and compromise the immune system. Those are risks from just being in constant exposure to it. When you actually ingest this stuff, well, then we're talking about kidney damage and intestinal inflammation. It can impair enzyme activity and lead to nutrient absorption issues at the very least. Studies have shown that iron, zinc, and fatty acid transport were significantly decreased following exposure to titanium dioxide nanoparticles. Then we have the artificial sweeteners, conveniently hidden away in most of our protein powders and many other supplements that come in powder form. As we've all heard from the health community, sugar is evil. So many products are taking advantage of this craze by promoting zero sugar on almost everything that they can. And they also make sure that you know that they use natural sweeteners like stevia, xylitol, or erythritol. But at the same time, many of these products also squeeze in some sucralose or a sulfame potassium, which are artificial sweeteners. Go down the protein powder aisle sometime and you'll just be amazed at how many products have both of these sweeteners in them. Sucralose may actually lead to diabetes and insulin resistance. And this has even been studied on humans. All the subjects that were in it were deemed insulin sensitive to begin the study and were given either sucralose or water. Then an oral glucose tolerance test was given after consumption and found that those consuming the sucralose showed a 23% decrease in insulin sensitivity. Asulfame potassium contains the carcinogen methylene chloride. Long-term exposure to methylene chloride can cause headaches, depression, nausea, mental confusion, liver effects, kidney effects, visual disturbances, and cancer in humans. Do I need to say more? The FDA does not require any further testing on the sweetener right now though. So basically it's sitting in limbo and available for all manufacturers for further use. Then we have the artificial colors. Things like red 40, blue number one, blue two, yellow five, green three, etc. Many people seem to be aware that these agents are not optimal for great health. These synthetic dyes are especially harmful to children. They've shown to induce allergic reactions and increase symptoms of ADHD. Many of these contain compounds like benzodyne and 4-amino biphenol, in which research has been linking these to cancer. So look for natural food colors that come from things like beets, carotenes, or annatto. Next up is the talcum powder, 
often denoted as TELC. This has been associated with cancers of the lungs and ovaries and even mesothelioma. Yeah, it's those ones from the commercials. Talc contains asbestos, but apparently there's also asbestos-free talc. I don't know about you, but I would rather just avoid it altogether than take a risk here, since there are plenty of other options out there without talc. And then the final ingredient that I want to talk about in this video is the highly polarizing magnesium stearate. This is actually an extremely good flow agent in the manufacturing of supplements. I know because I worked with it while I manufactured supplements. Very little is needed in the process compared to many of the other agents. And the rap sheet on this compound is that it can cause digestive problems, suppress T cells, and contain formaldehyde. The digestive tract issues aren't really a factor unless massive consumption of mag sterate is occurring. It's very unlikely that you'd ever even be able to meet this consumption requirement. The suppressed T-cell study, which was done in like 1900, has later been shown to be quite flawed in many aspects. There hasn't been any studies that have come along since then that have been able to prove this theory. And then the formaldehyde thing is a bit overblown as magsterate produces far less formaldehyde than many of your regular fruits and vegetables do. So I wouldn't worry too much about this compound being present in your formulas. The moral of the story is to look for the most pure supplements with short ingredients lists. Opt for organic and non-GMO labeled products if you can. It's never quite as bad or as rosy as the internet might tell you on these chemical compounds. Don't stress yourself out by becoming the label police or anything like that. You might just go crazy. Just be aware of some of these common key ingredients that I've shared with you today and find some good alternatives. You're never going to be perfectly avoiding all of the toxins out there, but little improvements can go a long way to your overall health and longevity. So hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay healthy, everyone.